that's me. I just want to apologize that this video has taken longer than I said it would. I know it's been several months, and I, I that wasn't part of the plan at all. But uh, things happened in my life, both technically and personally. Obviously, I'm not going to explain it, but long story short, I was in no position to complete this at the time. I had done. I began this in December at the time. I completed about like 80% of it. I was getting there to being done, but unfortunately, I just couldn't quite finish it. So that's all I'm doing right now. I am finishing it. I'm going to be adding this as well as one at the end to wrap it up. I am also going to be adding music throughout the video. That'll probably be like the very last thing I do. And then the last, and then another thing I'm going to do is the, you can hear the audio in the first incident with the picture with the still from it at the beginning before this. And then at the end, you hear one of the second incident. <laughs> That'll be there as well. That's also new. But the rest from the next footage of me on is footage from back in December. Footage, in, both video and audio footage. So yeah, just all for one you. And, uh, for those of you that have stuck with me since this happened, I, I really, I can't tell you how appreciative I am for you guys bearing with me, and I deeply apologize, but hey, the important thing is, we're back, we're gonna do this, and let's get this video started. All right, guys. Hello, everybody, today we are tackling a very interesting topic. You already know what it was if you read the title. Today, we are tackling the Max Headroom Broadcast Signal Intrusion, and this year, this is uploaded in 2017, I'm not sure when I'm uploading it. <laughs> it is the third, it will be the 30th anniversary, so I thought this would be my way to pay homage to one of the most iconic hijackings in history, probably the most iconic hijacking in history. So, let's begin with what happened. I'm going to introduce you to somebody. Look on the screen. This is WGN News anchor Dan Roan. And he was reporting the 9 o'clock news on the very 22nd, 1987. For the first 14 minutes or so, everything seemed pretty normal. He was going over all the events of the day, including the hometown Chicago Bears victory over division rival Detroit Lions. Until at about 9.14 p.m., this happened. <laughs> yup, you saw correctly, a man wearing a Max Headroom mask decided, Hey, I'm going to hijack Dan Road's signal. And he did for about 15 seconds before WGN engineers were able to switch the microwave frequencies to allow Dan Road to get back on the air. They immediately suspected that it was an inside job and searched the building, but the WGN executives couldn't find anybody. But that wouldn't stop Max from trying again. Now, the signal pirate was dressed up as Max Headroom, who was a service space dwelling TV host, the first of his kind. He first originated in a British movie, where he was the Taiyo character, and then, due to success, made his way overseas to America in its briefly run TV series. It was very short lived because it watched the ranks to Miami Vice, but the legacy of Max would surely not be forgotten. He was played by Matt Brewer, who had to go through all kinds of plastic makeup to look like he was computer generated, which that technology. Uh, known as CGI when we invented it till decades later. Anyway, he, what he was known for was talking about and making all kinds of funny jokes as well as pitching for the ill-fated new Coke. Now, let's go back to the intrusion. As I just said, Max wasn't done yet. Almost exactly two hours later, at 11.15 p.m. Central Standard Time, Max decided to hijack PBS affiliate WTTW while they were airing a rerun of, of Doctor Who known as Horror of Fang Rock, starring fourth Doctor Tom Baker, who many called the best. But that's besides the point. Now, during the first incident, there was just a lot of all humming and you couldn't understand what he was saying. This, however, you could. But yeah, there was a closer because it was kind of hard to understand still, because his dialogue was kind of mumbled. But luckily, I have subtitles for you guys. I looked around, and based on what I heard, and based on what some reliable sources heard, I kind of put it all together into this one subtitle transcript that you're going to see here. So please enjoy. You should talk often with the old ones of your tribe. 
That is the only way to learn. I'll get you a hot drink, miss. Oh, I can drink some dry clothes. What was it? He's a freaking man. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm better than Chuck's worst than freaking <laughs> Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I can tell a massive electric shock, he died instantly. The generator? Were you always so careful? It was... Now, wasn't that just wonderful? If you thought it was, well, you're in luck, because we're about to watch it again. But this time, I'm going to provide my own commentary on it, which pretty much be my own reaction to things he says, as it was kind of, you know, explaining, you know, in detail what he is saying. <sighs> Hoping I'll regret this later. Let's go. You should talk often with the old ones of your tribe. That is the only way to learn. I'll get you a hot drink, miss. Oh, I can drink some dry clothes, miss. Because it's a freaking word. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm better than Chuck's Worski. Freaking rough. <laughs> Chuck Swirsky was a sports anchor for WGN at the time. The only thing is, is that when Max first attempted to hijack WGN, it wasn't Swirsky's broadcast he hijacked, but Dan Rhodes. Also, when he comes in with that does it, he's a freaking nerd. Is but we that he meant that to be for when when he hijacked news anchors, calling them freaking nerds. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> now, this one often goes unexamined, and many people disagree on what he said here. But based on what a lot of other people thought he said, and based on what I heard, I combined it into this. And what I believe he meant by this is that he wanted Chuck Swirsky to, part of my language, go to hell. That's just why I thought he said. <laughs> As I said before, the real Max Hedder was a spokesperson for New Coat, and he just quoted their catchphrase, Catch the Wave. Now, when he dropped the can on the floor, you could hear clanking, sounding like a hard surface, and this is investigators' only evidence as to where this could have been shot. Many now agree based on that that it was shot in a garage. Whoa! What is that on his finger? Oh, I knew I was going to regret doing this. A song by the singing group known as The Temptations called I Know I'm Losing You has this as the first lyric of their song. So I guess Max is a fan of theirs or something. <laughs> <laughs> Clutch Cargo was a television series in the late 1950s known for using Synchrobox, which is a process where the actor's lips are put over their character. It has no CDX, as a reference to the show's final episode. The show hadn't aired on WGN since the mid-1970s, however, meaning that this could possibly be a callback to a childhood favorite TV show. <laughs> What Max is referencing here is Preparation H, a medication used to cure hemorrhoids. Max had hemorrhoids, apparently. Oh, I just need a giant masterpiece for all the greatest world newspaper nerds. Max attempted to reference here, he actually said the acronym wrong, 
is WGN's acronym, World's Greatest Newspaper. That newspaper, as well as the TV channel WGN, are both owned by the Chicago Tribune Company. <laughs> Could have fooled me, I didn't see any footprints. This is a very, you know, criticized quote right here. A lot of people are arguing over what he actually said. Uh, some say blood prints, which, okay, I guess I could see that. So some, some say blood stains. That was Wikipedia being stupid. But point is, there was a, there's a lot of arguing over what he actually said there. That's why I think he said, as well as uh, Batman out of, out of the archive, I watched this video, and when he said that, that was pretty convinced when I heard it again. So we're just gonna stick with it. Oh, oh, look, Alex, don't look. Keep your eyes closed. Ah, I, oh, this is so disgusting. You see? I told you guys I was gonna regret this. I told you. But wait, why would he go to all this time and expense with this? Oh. oh As I can tell, a massive electric shock, he died instantly. The generator? Are you always so careful? Was... Whew, they got that over with. Now, as you probably expect, there was like quite the impact on the television industry. And also, as you quite expect, it made the news the next day, so let's take a look at that. And as you could expect from something like this happening, it was on the news everywhere. Every major news station in Chicago and nearby and well, everywhere was reporting on this, and the FCC, as well as even the FBI, immediately began investigating on what could have happened and who could have done it. As I had said before, when the WGN incident happened, many believed it was an inside job, but they never found any evidence supporting that, and they never caught anybody in their studio doing this. Then, during their investigation, they found one plausible lead in which they found a warehouse which could have served as the location for filming, only for that to be disproven. After that, they Slowly leads again going dry over the years and it became a cold case to the point where they pretty much just gave up any investigating. To this day, no one knows who committed this. Although in 2011, the, the incident was sparked again, interesting incident I should say, when a person on Reddit claimed to know possibly who did it. He thought it was somebody who was autistic, his brother and his brother's girlfriend. But he, as well as FuzzyMemories.tv, were able to prove that it could not have been anybody who did not have need for technical knowledge or a job, you know, as a broadcaster. So then therefore the brothers were discluded, but it's a cool article anyway to take a look at. The interesting thing about these news sports is that they just took something that's rare. They took to the streets, that's what I was going to say, I'm sorry about that. They took to the streets and angry random people on their thoughts. And to this day, the incident remains unsolved, and we are not sure whether or not it will ever be solved. Not to mention, a lot of people have uploaded this incident to YouTube over the years, and it's gone viral pretty much. Countless copies around. I could go like a whole year counting how many copies of this incident are on YouTube, as well as a minor meme where people insert the incident in their videos humorously as if they got hijacked. So that's always pretty cool. But even so, it's not true as a joke, as he says, that he, what he did was still a crime. And if he ever were to be found, I actually don't think he would be charged. You see how I must love you? Because the statute of limitations is passed considering this coming year, 2017, will in turn be the 30th anniversary of said incident. And I do not think they're going to pursue that much a person who did this, considering it didn't end an injury or death at all. I don't think they really cared that much. But the original charge that they were going to give him was one to two years in jail and I think a hundred thousand dollar fine. Which is minuscule compared to what it would have been in today's charges. This is the last type of incident like this to occur in the history of American television and television in general. As they really tightened up after this one. I don't think anything like this will ever happen again. Especially with the way technology works. It's not, it's definitely not as easy if someone were to try it. Odds are that these people... Or any other people were to try to do this, they would probably get caught. And that's probably why the Baxter Empire never tried again. It's funny because another news station during the news, hosted by Mike Giangreco, if I pronounced that right, humorously answered a question this incident. 
during his newscast as a joke. Many feared at first that the pirate had returned, only for him to reveal, reveal that it was indeed a prank on his part. Pretty humorous, I must say. It's circling the internet if you want to see it. And that really just about does it. I don't know if this incident will ever be solved. But one thing's for certain. There, we kind of do know in a way how it was done. And the reason why it's so hard to determine who did it. The reason it's so hard is that the microwave sign signals that were used are so common that it could have been anybody. Could have been from any number of high rises in the Chicago area. You see, WGN and WTTW had their signals come from the Hancock and Sears Tower transmitters on, to on top of those. So all the pirate need to do is be closer than, than those transmitters. Then it would have had to even be more significantly powerful, just more powerful, and it would overwrite it. Someone even wrote a similar message to what I just said there, saying, it doesn't work on paper, it just works. And so, to this day, we don't know who did this. And we may never know. But the Magic Empire will forever live on in folklore. I think that's all, that always that sparks interest is the fact that uh, no one knows, even to this day, who the heck is behind that mask. And we may never know. Now, I'm just about to do with this video. I hope you enjoyed this documentary on such a, what well, I think is a cool topic. And uh, before I go, though, I have one more message, however, and it is directed. Right to you, some of that to you, the Max Headroom Pirate. If you are out there watching this, please come forward, tell me who you are, and prove to me that you did it. I will put my email below, just so you can send me an email with the proof that you did it, and who you are. And then you could come on my show, on my next episode, we would do, some about that, an interview together. That'd be pretty cool, right? Or, if you don't want to email me, you can message me on Facebook, on my Facebook page below as well. I hope you enjoyed this documentary. I know I did. And for the Max Hedron Pirate, I am Alex Armani, wishing you a very good day and a very lovely 2017. See you later. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And as I said before, that all was old footage I filmed on. I just read it, actually. It was the 29th. And once again, I am deeply sorry. Of course, that was not part of the plan. Originally, what the plan was, I wanted to have this out by, like, Late December, early January, most likely early January, I guess. I see the 29th, I'm like, that doesn't look like it'd be out in time in December. The point is, I apologize. Hey, you know what they say. Better late than never, right? So, uh, it's good to be back. I thought we'd make more stuff in the future. I'm gonna make a commentary for this on Alex, my second channel. I'm going to, I got some game videos coming up, including a very special one that I'm gonna keep quiet for now, but it's coming, I promise. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoy this video. I don't wanna say that too much because i'm pretty sure my counterpart in the previous clip just said that <laughs> but uh yeah so i hope you guys enjoyed it and i'll see you next time and not in five months so we much sooner than that all right bye